right, we're going to have some fun today. Now, it is my honor to bring to the podium the amazing individual who runs this great city of New Orleans. She works hard and plays hard and never stop working for the good of the people of the city of New Orleans. She is a mother, wife, and a woman of tremendous faith, and the first woman to be elected mayor in the 300-year history of the city of New Orleans. Ladies and gentlemen, our fearless leader, the Honorable <laughs> Mayor Latoya Cantrell. <laughs>
leadership that I mentioned in terms of James and Elroy, but also the, the residents, who we ask them to be creative and innovative, bringing forth new ideas for us to celebrate in 2021. We have over 300 residents respond, giving us some great ideas, and even our crews, as we know, stepped up with their own ideas. And I do want to acknowledge just we have crews that we know who engage in community service activities throughout this pandemic. Whether it was, of course, uh, Fifth the Town or on the streets in our community, and even with the, the Rex organization and, of course, the Zulu organization being very creative and innovative. Excited to see the growth of a crew of house floats that came again from the people. We want to thank the crew of Red Beans even for their inspiration, hire a Mardi Gras artist, a project to hire float artists, artists in our city. And of course, instead of parades, some crews have stepped up to have scavenger hunts, again, throughout the city of New Orleans. Bacchus developed an app where they'll have a throw me something Bacchus, where again, virtually celebrating Mardi Gras season. Also, I'm just so proud all the sacrifices that we've had to make as we move through again this pandemic, but also highlighting, oh, my God, for 2021. Last, I also want to acknowledge, I gave them a shout out to our public safety team, who has been instrumental in terms of how we host my God throughout the city of New Orleans. And on Monday, I did announce that we have removed our public safety team from furloughs in the city just to ensure that we keep public safety at the heart of everything of that we do. And so thank you again to our public safety leadership. And if you don't mind joining me and giving them a round of applause. So as we know, the Mighty Crowd is a little bit different this year. We will keep our traditions alive as best as possible. So that means, of course, celebrating King's Day. It means uh, receiving the proclamations. It also means cutting king cake. So we have three so that we're properly socially distanced, but we're going to ensure that we uphold the traditions that keep this city and keep the spirit of Mardi Gras alive. So thank you again for just allowing me to serve as your mayor. You know, during my first King's Day uh, cel uh, celebration, I said now, this long-standing tradition. My job is not to mess it up, keep <laughs> traditions alive. So I have to do a little bit different in my role as mayor as we've had to respond to this pandemic. But make no mistake about it, the light is at the end of the tunnel, and we will continue to celebrate the great traditions of the city of New Orleans like only we can. So thank you so much. Happy Mardi Gras. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We are excited to be here today and get this party started. Of course, there are a few individuals who make Mardi Gras so special, one of them being the Rex Organization. And representing the Rex Organization is Mr. James Reese III. He is the president of the organization, and we'll ask him to come forward and make his presentation. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Julius. Uh, good morning, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everybody that's listening uh, via Zoom and those that are dialing in via live stream. I hope that everyone that's watching is, is in good spirits and staying healthy and safe. I can't tell you how good it feels to be able to stand here and say three simple words. Happy Mardi Gras. As the mayor said, Mardi Gras is a season that cannot be canceled. Parades have been canceled before. World War I, World War II, once during the Korean conflict, but never in the history of our city has the spirit of our citizens been dampened, nor has their love of life and desire to celebrate it been halted. It is what makes us unique amongst our fellow Americans and what draws millions of visitors to our city and our home each year. This year has been tough for everybody, and it became clear early on that the task of the Mayor's Mardi Gras Advisory Council in advising the Mayor on Mardi Gras would be much different this year. First, we had to tackle the issue of whether or not parades would even be possible. Luckily, many of our parading crews have medical professionals within their ranks who are more than up to the task of helping in any way possible. 
A subcommittee was formed, and I'd like to thank and commend Dr. Takesha Davis, who's busy and can't be here today for obvious reasons, of Fem Fatal and Dr. Eric Laborde from the Rex organization for leading that effort, and to the doctors and medical professionals from all the various crews that served on that subcommittee and all the medical professionals from the city who stepped in to really answer an impossible question. While parading is obviously not possible due to the pandemic, the Mayor's Mardi Gras Advisory Council's task was not complete. There are different ways that we can celebrate the season, and I'll let you hear those details shortly from my good friend and fellow co-chair, Elroy James. So what is Rex doing this year? As you know, Rex's motto is pro bono publico, which means for the public good, and Rex has worked hard year-round to live up to that motto. Our foundation, the Pro Bono Publico Foundation, has once again attained its annual goal of giving away a million dollars to area charter and public schools and the organizations that support them. We're very proud of that fact as we thought that that might be not possible this year during, uh, due to the pandemic. Thank you to the foundation's chairman and Rex 2020, Mr. Story Charbonnet, and his board for working tirelessly to bring that to fruition. Well, while Rex won't be sharing the streets with our friends from Zulu this year, we, our commitment to working together throughout the year to better our, our immediate surrounding neighborhoods is not wavered. We're currently looking at some potential public service projects uh, and other ways that we continue to partner to have the biggest impact on the city all year round. So thank you to Elroy for your continued support and uh, to the leaders of that effort, Dr. Stephen Hales from Rex and Clarence Becknell from the Zulu organization. During my time in the Marine Corps, we were always taught to try and find the positive in every scenario and to adapt to any situation. Last year, you heard me discuss the mayor's greener Mardi Gras initiatives and how Rex would be supporting that endeavor by reducing the amount of plastics that we throw off our floats. Well, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to report that there'll be a lot less plastic in catch basin this year. So that's, that's there, is a, there is a bright side. Uh, we will be continuing that effort uh, next year, which is Rex's 150th anniversary in 2022, by replacing all of our plastic bead throw bags with a handsome, fully biodegradable cloth bag with the Rex logo. We, uh, we hope that in addition to reducing waste that the bag that the bees come in also becomes kind of a collectible, handsome throw item. Um, I may ask Julius and Barry if they would uh, unveil the proclamation. Um, as you know, the Rex organization is incorporated under the name School of Design, which reflects the organization's focus on art and education. While there's no parade to showcase our rolling works of art this year, we felt that it was important to continue with the tradition of showcasing a local artist and creating a proclamation while this year's proclamation doesn't proclaim Mardi Gras, as there's no Rex to do so, this year's artist wanted to present it as a symbol of our city's great endurance and the riderless captain's horse embodying the spirit of Mardi Gras and the Rex organization, which gallops on. It represents a bridge between what we have all endured this year and what is waiting for us on the other side. Health, prosperity, and life moving forward. This year's proclamation was designed and created by local artist Shelley Hesse, in addition to being a classmate, a high school classmate of mine, Shelley is a New Orleans painter who is inspired by nature. Her work typically depicts the large birds of Louisiana, the wildlife of Africa, and unique sea life. She works in watercolor and gouache on paper and has been selling her work for over 20 years. She has also collaborated with the store Anthropology on a home line which bears her name. Shelley has clients all over the world with her primary markets being New Orleans, Dallas, and the East Coast. This is Shelley's second proclamation for the school design, her first being the All Creatures Great Small Proclamation of 2013. I know she's out there watching, so thank you very much, Shelley. <laughs> Madam Mayor, your office has been through a lot in the last two years, and I know there's more hard work to be done. Under your chair is a small token of the Rex organization's appreciation for what you have done for the city and for Mardi Gras. Please accept them with our gratitude and appreciation. Julius and Elroy, thank you both as well for putting, helping us put this on. There's gifts under your, your chairs uh, as well. I'd be remiss before turning the mic back over, though, Madam Mayor, to Julius, if I didn't highlight the hard work and dedication of Lisa Alexis and her staff of the Office of Cultural Economy. Lisa and her staff are amazing to work with, and with your Mission, we have a special gift for their offices at Gallier Hall. And while Rex will 
be able to appear in his winter capital this year, he's actually sent one of his emissaries uh, to present an edict that we hope will hang in the Hall. Thank you, Rex Lieutenant. I will not try and read that font. We saw what happened last year with that. <laughs> it reads as follows. Rex, the King of Carnival, sends greetings and regrets that the pandemic that has afflicted his beloved capital city will not allow him to make annual visits to celebrate the joyful carnival season with his subjects. We saddened and send our deepest condolences to all who have suffered loss and encourage all to follow the guidance of those who seek to keep our subjects safe that we might celebrate again together. We look forward to the great anticipation for the year of our Lord 2022 when we must return to renew our carnal traditions and celebrate the 150th anniversary of our glory reign in our beloved capital city of New Orleans. We trust in our absence that subjects will find ways to safely celebrate the joys of carnival season, preserving our traditions in the anticipation of their joyous renewal in 2022. We will never, ever cease to love. By my own hand, Rex, King of Carnival. Once again, thanks to everybody for being here. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Elroy, for working hard this year. Uh, Julius, I'll turn it over back to you. Let's give the president of the Rex organization a round of applause. <laughs> Great is just a wonderful guy to work with, easy going, and just fits right in with all of us. I consider you a part of our family in the mayor's office. And so at this time, we will have a presentation by the Zulu organization and the president, attorney Elroy James. Let's give him a round of applause. As history and as news accounts have reported, 
for the last 11 months. Zulu Associated Pledge Club was hard hit by the pandemic. So early on, as we were developing our part our New Orleans and Mardi Gras plan, I felt it was only fitting that the 2021 carnival season somehow reflect the lives of the brothers that we lost, who I believe have contributed greatly to this organization. We lost the likes of King Zulu, Larry Hammond. When you see the Zulu King, you often see the protectors of King Zulu. We lost the brothers of the likes of Bobby Gray, who was a member of our soul board. But we also lost some guys whose name probably never go up the likes of our organization, but I believe played a significant role in our organization, such as members of the Zulu Ensemble. We lost individuals who have represented us as organization as mayor of the land, governor of the land, so have played a, a huge part in the history of Mardi Gras and Zulu Association and Pledge Club. So this year, our souvenir program will be a collector's item that I will reflect the lives and the contributions of those, uh, those individuals, and I believe we'll be a member of item. So I'm going to ask that you look for that booklet as, it's, as it brings final production and invest in it because it will reflect the loss that we experienced and what I hope will be a pandemic that we will never take in this lifetime. <clears throat> also, in Zulu fashion, I'm going to ask Dennis Robinson to also come up. We designed a unique bobblehead for the 2021 carnival season that I'm going to tell everyone that you want to make sure has a place on your map. <laughs> it, is, it reflects what we are doing every day, masking up so that 2022 will be a bigger and brighter Mardi Gras and history for this organization. So, Madam Mayor, we do have gifts for you. I'm going to ask uh, my counterpart with the Rex organization to uh, on behalf of the Zoom Social Club, 800 members who work hard every day. I want to say thank you. I want to thank your health department and the first responders who have worked tirelessly to make sure that the lives of the world is not the world. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you my team. of one of our women crews to share our thoughts on Mardi Gras during this COVID environment. Representing the crew of Finn Pintel, the 2020 Queen and Chairman of the Board, Michelle Cooper Rodney. Last but not least, Fem Nation. 
My name is Michelle Cooper Rodney, and as uh, Julius said a minute ago, I am the 2020 queen of the Mystic Crew of Bempha Town. The mission of the Mystic Crew of Bempha Town, established in 2013, is to offer women of all creeds and colors a unique opportunity to promote and support New Orleans through participation in the annual Mardi Gras season while uplifting the community through various endeavors of engagement, awareness, and social enhancement. Typically, Fib Nation would be joining and running around the town, painting it red and black during this time, leading up to our annual parade. We would be hosting events around the city, both large and small, to commemorate Mardi Gras. Such events as Fem Gras, our Crown Jewel de Declaration, that's held annually in the chambers of the city council, our gala, which is spectacular, and of course, our beautiful parade with whistles, masks, umbrellas, and compacts all over the place. I have my whistle here. I would be remiss if I didn't do that. First, I'd also like to thank uh, my, my president, our president of the Mystic Group in Patel, Dr. Takesha Davis, who could not be here with us today uh, because, of course, she is uh, doing her duties of ensuring that our elderly are receiving the COVID vaccination. So I did want to take a moment to recognize her. We know this is not a typical year. And while we can't parade or host large parties, MKFF is committed to our mission of celebrating women, women in Mardi Gras, and thus will present a unique opportunity for all who love Mardi Gras to celebrate with Fem Nation as our MKFF presents Fem Gras of 2020. It will be a week-long celebration of her story. Fem Gras 2021 will be a celebration of all of our crown jewels, our queens of Mardi Gras. Beginning on January 31st this year, 2021, and culminating on our planned parade day, which would be February 7th, 2021. This week-long celebration will include static displays of our beautiful queen costumes all around the city. In partnership with local businesses, virtual performances by local musicians to entertain us as we follow the city guidelines, of course. And even virtual compact decorating showcases to highlight our coveted signature throw, which is a compact. Not only does MKFF want to put on a virtual party, but we want to support our local businesses and culture bearers who continue to struggle, as so many are during this time, uh, to struggle during this pandemic. At the Mystic Crew of Femme Patel, we are more than just a Mardi Gras crew. So stay tuned for the Femme Gras lineup of costume locations and virtual events, which will be revealed on January 31st. And join Femme Nation in painting the virtual town in the city of New Orleans, candy apple red and black, as we celebrate Mardi Gras in this unique year. Thank you all for your time. Congratulations, job well done. Keep up the good work that your organization is doing. 
your shining example of what good people can do to make a difference in the city of New Orleans. And now, before we get to eat King Cake, everybody say King Cake. King Cake. <laughs> <Ooh>, yes. <laughs> before we do that, I would like the mayor to come up along with Lisa Alexis, the Director of Office of Cultural Economy and President of the New Orleans Tourism Cultural Fund for the City of New Orleans to assist the mayor in making a special presentation. Listen, guys, while I'm here, um, this morning, you guys might have seen the NOLA.com and the Advocate announced a virtual Mardi Gras uh, event that's going to be going on in the city. Uh, we've been putting together, we've been working with NOLA.com and Mardi Gras World. We've been working with the different crews uh, for several months now, and we've put together a program that the mayor has been very kind to, to help us out with and give us full support. But uh, basically what we're trying to do is, is we're going to present Mardi Gras to the world. Uh, NOLA.com uh, and something else I didn't realize gets 93 million, according to uh, Doug's uh, articles, or 93 million individual views a year, which is a huge amount. Uh, just during carnival time, the, when they show the virtual parades, when they do the parade, the real parades, and they live stream them, they get 80 to 100,000 hits every evening. Uh, this program is going to be on the hour and a half show, three hour and a half shows, four and a half hours of content that will be discussions with not only the captains, uh, but with the music of New Orleans, um, as well as the designers of, of the parades, uh, the people that are involved with making Mardi Gras happen. And it's also going to shed light on what Mardi Gras really is. You know, to the rest of the world, you know, guys, we take this for granted, what Carnival is. But Carnival in New Orleans and Mardi Gras is a business. And obviously, I recognize that being in the business. But it, it is a business, and it brings a lot of attention to our city. Uh, Mardi Gras, if you look at in terms of what a Super Bowl does for a city, Mardi Gras is like having a couple of Super Bowls in our city every year. And so these festivals and events, I'm hoping that this will also bring, let us recognize how important this is to our economy, what we do, and we do it so uniquely. So um, anyway, for, for everyone that's here and virtually, um, please participate. Um, we expect this to be a, a fantastic television or streaming program. We're expecting a million, at least a million views for each evening that we present it which will be great for, not only for Mardi Gras and keeping Mardi Gras relevant, but also the city of New Orleans. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Mayor. And you know, I just want to tell you, thank you. We were on the telephone last night, how much time you? 
about 11 o'clock, trying to make sure that not only this, but the virtual Mardi Gras would go smoothly. And our good friend John Jordan, I finally got him on the phone, and I said, John, where were you? He said, I was at the movies. I said, the movies? I said, man, we're trying to get Mardi Gras going. He said, well, I got people who take care of it for me. So I <laughs> want to give you a shout out. Thank you very much for the work that you do and being a friend to our administration. Now, before we do that, you know we got one of those former Zulu kings in the house. <laughs> with your permission, I want council member Cindy to come forward as well and give us a brief remark. Jay, I said brief. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> now, Julie is telling somebody to be brief. That is true. The quintessential pot calling. Uh, <laughs> but I just wanted to say happy Mardi Gras to everyone and encourage everyone who is listening to make sure that you still enjoy this Mardi Gras. Now, it is obviously going to be different, but it is still going to be Mardi Gras. So boil your crawfish, cook your gumbo, cook your red beans, but just do it in a very safe manner. Celebrate with your family, celebrate in your pod, and just think about what's going to happen next year. We want you all to remain safe so that next year we will have the biggest Mardi Gras ever in the history of the world. But we all want you to be here to see. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you take this by seriously, wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance. If you're sick, stay home, and we will get through this. So with that, happy Mardi Gras. Enjoy 2021, and just look to 2022. We're going to blow it off the chain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 